For that little bit of air, God gives unto the house of Adam. Adam lost it. Satan took it. For God denies it that the outside that you did, they will be another to fall into the hands of Satan. So what we were talking about last Sunday, we saw what Adam did and how the king's man, the man came to redeem mankind. And the king's man, the demon, is not man's idea, it's God's own idea. I read some parts of Leviticus 25 to you last Sunday. I'm sure you took it down. So you can always get back to it. Leviticus 25, you saw it there. This king's man is demanding. When someone has fallen, his next of king, the king brethren can remove the person. So the problem here was Adam was a man. So to redeem Adam, it will have to take a man. But what the problem was with Adam was his blood type. The blood type had the best of contaminated by the adultery that had taken place in the garden of Eden. Adultery of Eve with the serpent. And let me repeat again, that serpent was not a snake. Contrary to what you tell you in churches today, it was not a snake. Just go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, and see where serpent came in for the first time in the Bible of God. Did God call him a snake there? The answer is no. They belong to the animal world, yes. But it was the closest thing in the animal world to mankind. And for those who keep arguing, it's not possible that an animal, the seven can sleep with, a, a could have slept with it as a quiet. What's the problem? Do you know the chimpanzee? Yes, I'm a chimpanzee. As a thief, you stumble into a chimpanzee. Mark my word, stumble into a chimpanzee in the forest. What will you strike you that you are looking at? So, well, it looks like a man. Uh, I said, yeah, it looks like a man. It could be some of an unclean fashion of man, but a man nonetheless. You agree? Yes, I said, good. Have you knocked yourself up that you, are those, you don't follow the rules? Do you not know that chimps, chimpanzees, they also know how to kidnap women, carry them to their base, and rape them. Oh, yeah, I've read something like that, and you accept that. So, yes, if chimpanzee could do that, the one way superior to chimpanzee in call, and serpent was the head of the animal kingdom. The Bible says that. So a chimpanzee today can sleep with women. How dare you say a creature superior to chimpanzee could not have spoken and slept with him? In any case, he spoke the language of Adam and Eve. Unless you don't believe the Bible. There was conversation. And this one you call snake. The serpent, he was able to converse with him, reason with him, convinced him to get something from his memory. I said, Who do you know in his life that has all that? He said, Man, I said, So, what I know? So, serpent was just like a man, so what a headache. 
And don't forget that subject was not a bad criminal. He is bad to all of us today because Satan possessed him and used him. You have to ask yourself, uh, why could Satan, if, if you so, why could Satan do it now? After Satan was a Christian, and then I said, I can't do it here. The woman that we talk about is fully turned back. Do you not belong to that group? Who said that angels came to this earth? Do the side on this earth? And raise families on this earth to the females. And if it is so, why did Satan bother to use serpent? Why did he just go into Eve himself? Because it was Satan speaking through the serpent. And please don't tell me how can Satan speak through the serpent? Because even in this place, we know that there are some people that one I have prayed for, and the enemy, Satan, is the demons who are speaking through them right in this place. And so, you have no case. Therefore, the sin in the Garden of Eden had to do with blood, because conception has to do with blood. And life is in the blood. Even when he says that. So kids marry demon has to be somebody who has blood. Every other thing creation has no blood. Ground has no blood. Air has no blood. Water has no blood. Fruit has no blood. Sun, moon, stars, all of them don't have blood. But the birds of the air, they have blood. The animals, the sea or the land, they have blood. But their blood is inferior to man's blood. And man, descendant of Adam, there's no way you could use his blood because he's still carrying Adam's blood in him. And that Adam's blood is the one that has become contaminated by the sin in the garden of people. So where is that man going to be found? Who will not carry that contamination in his blood? So that should remind you about Elohim that he had in his great man for creation, that he will be a redeemer. Therefore, all that was left was Elohim, come and be the redeemer. And for him to do that, he will have to step into time and take on flesh. Enter the story of the Virgin Mary. That's all. This thing is not so difficult. So that same creator of the universe, by his Christ, provided the blood that was required to cleanse man. That's King's man with him. So I hope I will never have to say this to this assembly ever again, that you now know it, it is very clear to you. Okay? All right, so let's now move. I remind you again. All right. I will try as much as possible to take to quote from the ground. You know, the elder called him a lion because he had been a lamb. He had been a intercessor, a bloody lamb. But now he's come forth as a lion to claim his rights, his title deed. Because in days of intercession, his material rule will be over at that time. And over that time, it's only going to come at the seventh church age, which is this age where we are in, and that is the time when the, all the mysteries will be cleared up. And that explains why you read this morning in Revelation 10 7. In the days, in the days of the voice of the second angel, 
what can I speak? Yes, in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when it shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he has declared unto his servant the prophet. So that is why. So at this seventh church age, that is when this thing about opening up the seals will take place. Because at the moment he's doing his material work, he's mediating, making intersections, intersections for us to believe that for 2,000 years he's gone up and he's been training. But where we read today, he's stepping forth because the time of the end is come. He came here, he died on the cross, he shed his blood, we were redeemed. Yes, but he did not claim his price. We were redeemed. Why did you take the tattoo deed at that time? The answer is simple. Nothing of God is left to chance. They did not because it was not yet the time. That will have to happen when the last person that will go in the rapture in this age will come in. For as long as that last person has not come in, our mediator, who is Jesus Christ, will continue to remain on that his intercession seat in heaven, waiting for when the last person to come in will come in. When will that be? We don't know. But we know that this is the time this is the season where that will come, but then when that will happen, and when that happens, then he will step forth from eternity to take that title deed, to take that book. Therefore, know full well that what you read in Revelation 5 is something that will happen in this hour, age. Not just happening this hour, age, it's happening, it's going to happen in your time and in my time. Are you with me, church? Yes, so you know the time in which you are living. When you get home, read what we read this morning and just know that it is fixing to happen in your own time. Because that is when all the mysteries shall be made open. You understand, church? So the man comes forth from being the mediator between God and man. He will then become a lion. And when he becomes a lion, he takes that book. It's time for him to grab that which belongs to him. So that book is still there in the hands of God. No man can take it. No, it's not possible. They will come for to take the book to reveal the mysteries of God. There are so many people have been laboring over the years trying to say it is so abstract. But they never got it because it was not revealed until February 1963. Remember that year, it is very, very important. Then also remember as well,
what we said at that time. That he is in heaven. In, in that book, contained in that book, are the names of all those who are redeemed. Nothing is going to happen by chance. From before the foundation of the world, the names of all those who will be redeemed were already written in that book. That's the book of redemption. If you are true believer of the message of the hour today, just know that it is proof that your name is in that book. And if your name is in that book, then you will fulfill all that is required for you to make rapture. That means the three stages of salvation, justification, which is baptism in water in the name of Jesus Christ, sanctification, cleansing, from all that is wrong, that you will be living all form of flesh, all form of carnality, or wash out, that is second stage. And the third stage is regeneration. The Holy Spirit comes tabernacle inside of you, living inside of you, directing your every thought in your word and your If you believe truly in your heart the message of your day, and as we are the last church day, the message of today, that message referred to in Matthew 25, that midnight cry, that which I'm preaching to you now, because it's part of the shout message, the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout. That's the first stage of rapture. Then with the voice of the archangel, that's the second stage. And the third stage is the throne of God. The first stage is going on. That's what I'm teaching to you. In 1933, at the Ohio River, God established it. When that same fire from heaven, the light that struck Paul on the way to Damascus, the light that led the children of Israel through the wilderness, which in the Old Testament was called the Angel of the Covenant, which you and I know simply means Christ. That same light came down in 1933 before hundreds of people on the banks of the Ohio River where people were picnicking, enjoying themselves, as you'd expect, on any beach. And the brand was one corner baptizing people. And when it came to the 17th person who was baptizing this fire, this fire, this light. Why is this thing so? Sort it out or don't give me the back mic for letting just put it on and being distracted. This fire came down and hundreds of pairs of eyes saw it because all activity froze up as everybody said, hey, what is this? And the same Lord Jesus Christ spoke through that through that light, through that ball of fire. 
all of us, all of you know it, you have seen the photograph of it. As John the Baptist for around the first coming of Jesus Christ, so will your message for around the second. That's the shout going forward. So first as well, first as well as four. That's what I see, the shout. The Lord shall descend for heaven with a shout. The shout went forth. The message of Christ through William Abraham started going forth. That message is what I preach to you now. And it's been preached all over the world. The second stage is the voice of the archangel. You read it now in Revelation 10 this morning. That mighty angel who read about in Revelation 10 is still the same Christ who showed up in the form of light to start the message. He is the one going to give that voice. And when that voice will come forth, seven thunders alter their voices. So that is where we are heading now, okay? So please try to understand these things. So Christ has done the redemption, but he has not claimed his life. And now we want to look at some other things. The seven seed. It cannot work. Remember, there are seven seeds. There are seven seeds. The first six seeds, they have been opened. The first six seeds have been opened. You see that in chapter six of the book of Revelation. Please, when you get to me, try to read it. There only a few verses there, chapter six, only a few verses. But the first six, they have been opened. What has not been opened? Is the seventh seed. And Abraham told us, remember when the seven angels came, the constellation of seven angels. When they picked him up from the earth, west and took him east back to, they took him up from Tucson. And took him back to, to Jefferson Day. For eight days, he was locked up in it. And each night, one of the angels will come, teach him, reveal the sins to him. There were some angels in that constellation that came. You know it. You see the cloud in the air. I can't go through that again. But each night, one will teach him. Oh, second night, the second, third night, fourth night, fifth night, sixth night. But on the seventh, the angel that came to talk to him about the seventh seed was the Lord Jesus Christ himself. When we say these things, they are puzzles. They say we are dreamers. We are this, we are that. 
How can Jesus Christ come on earth? And I look at him and say, I know you your Bible. Say, yes, I know your Bible. Say, Genesis 18. Did you ever come down to earth or not? What do you mean? I said, what are you open your Bible and then see Genesis 18. They did not come down in the company of two angels. Why are you angry? Because we are living in the uh, 21st century. And we are saying, Jesus Christ came to a man. Because we are living the same time, you can't believe. But you can believe that Jehovah came to Abraham. I said, that's your faith. It does not mean that Jesus Christ came to Abraham in his power as the Christ of God. No. It's on the tail for the of an angel. And he was the seventh of the seven angels in the constellation. For the opening of the seventh seal. He didn't give to any other angel. He came to do that himself. Because it is very, very important. So that you will have understanding. Brown, that is, and if you have understanding, that also will have understanding. So let me tell you about the seven sin. The Ram said the seven sin is the end of time. I'm quoting. I'm quoting Graham now. The seventh seal is the end of time. The end of all things. Therefore, if it is the end of all things, it means this seventh seal and what is contained seventh seal is going to keep going on until we enter into eternity. You understand, therefore, why it has to take the Christ of God himself to come and reveal it. Abraham said, it is the end of the struggling world that the seventh sin will mark the end of the struggling world. Is the end of struggling nature. Is the end of the trumpets. Is the end of the fires. Is the end of the earth. That is the world system. It is even the end of time. Time runs out on the seventh seed, my dear brothers and sisters. Time runs out on the seventh seed. Everything ends up on the seventh seed. Now, how is God going to do this? We don't know how. There is a time for the ushering in of the millennium. The seventh sea also contains the time of the ushering of the millennium. The breaking of this sea was so great that heaven was hushed by it. The breaking of this seven sin was so great that even heaven was hushed by it. Silence. As you read, as you read, as you read the reason in verse one.
You can be silent for a space of half an hour to let that begin. Nothing moves in heaven for that period. Some of us will say about half an hour. What is that? Listen to how Abraham replied to that. He said, no, a half hour might not be long. If you are having a good time, a half hour might not be long. But in the suspense of between death and life, it seemed like a millennium. It was so great, Jesus never mentioned it. None of the apostles mentioned it. John couldn't even write of it. No, it was forbidden. He didn't write. It was just silent. Therefore, you and I can think. From what I just said now, the bits that I read, it should be clear to all, therefore, that the 30 minute silence in heaven in Revelation 8 1 had something to do with the events in Revelation 10 1 to 6. Two of us, George. Do you catch it? They are not convinced. Turn your Bible again to Revelation 8. Revelation 8. Revelation 8, verse 1. Please pay attention now to something I want to tell you. Revelation 8, verse 1 says, I want you to bring Christ. When he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Do you call that church? Okay, then go to 10. Then we shall 10. Then we shall 10. And I saw another mighty angel from this one. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as square the sun, and, feet, and his feet as pillars of fire. Verse 2. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. 3. And cried with a loud voice, as when a loud roared. And when he had cried, seven thunders. Their voices. And now, with that which I just told you, Brahm now said in the same way, that this half hour, this seventh, uh, seventh thing. During which the seven thunders uttered their voices. And so I said to you, we have seven seals being opened in Revelation 8, verse 1. All right? We read that. And now we are looking at Revelation 10. The loud word. And the seven thunders uttered their voices. What does that tell you of me? It means that that silence in Revelation 8 1 has something to do with the seven thunders in Revelation 10 3. Does that make sense or not, church? Uh, church? It does, right? Okay. 
But offering of the service was Revelation 8. Founders, Revelation 10. This is what I want to show you today. <laughs> I spent time on this, and I want you to see, to get what I came up with. I'll ask you, please write it down. I ought to have written this out, but if it's put on the screen, it's just for those on Zoom. So I'm asking those on Zoom and those of you are here physically to see something now. It's not like that in the Bible, but you can see it and we shall prove it now. And maybe when we do that, we can close. In Revelation 8, verse 1, silence, 30 minutes. In 10, the thunders. Why? God knows that the Bible can be in the hands of everybody and anybody. It's like the that uh, Muslim guy who just beat somebody on the street. I was trying to bamboo it by saying, Say, me your Bible say, this guy was uh, 22 here. Yeah. And your same Bible, the other person is 42. It's 22 and 42 the same thing. So your Bible has died. And the one was looking at it. I think it was my people sending to me. And the fall of you, I explained it. But obviously, the guy who was being approached did not have any idea. God has a way of mixing the Bible to confuse those who will be looking for a way to discredit his word. Let me rearrange it for you now. Please, I advise you to write it down. Before I tell you what to do, go back to Revelation 6. Revelation 6 is all about the six seeds being opened. Revelation 6 is about the seeds being opened. From the first seed, to the sixth C. So ordinarily, after the sixth C, what should happen? It should be the seventh C, isn't it? Well, it didn't happen that way. Instead, we had Revelation 7, which was, we talks only about the one for the 4,000 of Israel. And then after that, finished talking about 144,000 Israel, he now came to verse 8 to talk about the seventh seed. In Taiwan, we are dealing with 70 weeks of Daniel. 69 weeks have gone. The 69 week ended at the time of crucifixion of Christ. And then, and I continue with this here. Yes, yes. 69 weeks ended at the Christian of Christ. But Daniel and I had talked about 70 weeks. Now we came to 69 weeks. And there was one week left. And he did not continue. Instead, from that time of 69 weeks, we have had a period of 2,000 years. And yet, the 70th week, the last cannot come in. It's the same thing you are looking at here. Revelation 6 is talking about 
the six seats, they are totally open. So if you are reading the Bible and want to go from point to A, from A to B to C to D, the next thing that should happen should be uh, should be the seventh seal. Is that not common sense? Yes. But it's not so. Therefore, I ask you, see what I've done? And I've spent time going over it, you know, by asking the spirits to tell me if I'm wrong to stop. He did it. So I know it's correct. This is how to arrange it. This is how you arrange it now. Okay? This is how you arrange it. Attach chapter 8, verse 1. I advise you to write it down to help you. It will help you to have an understanding of what will happen in this end time. Attach chapter 8, verse 1 to the end of chapter 6. You know, chapter 6 ended with the sixth seal. Chapter 8 begins with the seventh seal, right? Seventh seal, chapter 1. So attach chapter 8, verse 1. I didn't say the whole of chapter 8. Chapter 8, verse 1. Attach it to the end of chapter 6. With this, after verse 17 of chapter 6. I you got that. Then when you've done that, then bring in chapter 10, verses 1 to 11. And I touch it. Chapter 10, 1 to 11, which is actually the whole of chapter 10. Okay? The moving and put chapter 11. Chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. Huh? Which one? Okay. Let me start. Start. Put chapter 8, verse 1 under the end of chapter 6. Okay. You can get that. Then bring in the whole of chapter 10, 1 to 11. And after that, bring in chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. Chapter 11, 1 to 6, the ministry of the two prophets of Revelation 11. Okay? You bring that in. When you've done that, then you bring in chapter 7. Chapter 7, 1 to 17. Chapter 7, 1 to 17. That's the ceiling of the 144,000. Do you notice? This ceiling of 144,000 is coming here under the ministry of two prophets because it is during the after rapture the gospel goes back to israel the two prophets of revelation 11 will start their ministry it is good as a result of that their ministry is as a result of that that those one for the four thousand of Revelation seven will be seen. I hope that I've explained it right. Are you with me so far? Yes, sir. Then
bringing the balance of revolution in level. They bring the balance of revolution in level seven to twelve. Revolution in level versus seven to twelve. That takes care of the killing by the Antichrist forces of the two prophets of Revolution. The first time that we of the devil is about the city of the war for the four thousand. After that, the Antichrist will kill the two prophets. So that is what we have there. The revolution in devil seven to then follow up from that with chapter 8. Chapter 8, verses 2 to 13. That is, you know, we use only one chapter in chapter, only one verse in chapter 8. Now, verse 1. Now, bringing the balance of that chapter 8, which is verses 2 to 13. Yes. Actually, that is the great tribulation we are looking at there. Are you with me so far? Yes, sir. Then add chapter 9. The whole of chapter 9, which it is. The whole of chapter nine. And finally, we will bring in the balance of Revelation 11 from verses 13 to 19. So let me go to it all again. I want to start from the beginning. Attach chapter 8, verse 1, to the end of chapter 6, which means chapter 6, verse 17. 2. Then bring in chapter 10, the whole of it, verses 1 to 11. That's dealing, of course, with the rapture. Three. Now bring me chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. That's the ministry of the two prophets of Revelation 11. 11, 1 to 6. Then four. Bring in chapter 7. Verses 1 to 17. 7, 1 to 17. That's the entire chapter 7, which is the sinning of the 144,000. Five. Then bring in Revelation 11. 7 to 12. Revelation 11, 7 to 12, which is the killing of the two prophets of Revelation 11. Then 6, follow up with the rest of chapter 8. Follow up with the rest of chapter 8, which means Chapter 8, verses 2 to 13. 7. Then add chapter 9, the whole of chapter 9. And 8. Finally, add chapter 11, 13 to 19. From the rest of chapter 
take two protein to five to five protein to protein. That is all about great tribulation. Now, if you get to my study, it, I know someone say, "Ah, but that is this thing you are doing." I know you are something. Let me tell, I tell you what you are going to find, and then you explain it. So you don't have to bother. The fulfillment of Revelation eight one. That's the thirty minutes of this level. Our Revelation 10, 1 to 6, which is about the rapture. Those two, in terms of fulfillment, when they will be fulfilled, they will come before that of the sixth seal. Revelation 8 1, Revelation 8 verse 1, link with Revelation 10 1 to 6. You know, both of them are talking about the seventh seal and the time of the rapture. Those of them, so they will come, their fulfillment will come before the fulfillment of the sixth seal, which is chapter 6. Why? Because the sixth seal is the end of Daniel's 70th week, which leads to the coming to the second advent of Jesus Christ. Revelation 8, 1, Revelation 10, 1 and 6 is Revelation 8, 1, Revelation 10, 1 and 6 is about the rapture. And you know that the rapture must happen before the 70th week of Daniel will come in. The 70th week of Daniel, which is the seven the one we can have of seven years, you know that is actually talking about the tribulation and the great tribulation period. A rapture must happen before that time. I don't know if you have understood what I said. Huh? Yes, okay, ask. Yes. Revelation six. The sixth seal, eh? the sixth seal is only talking about the great, the, the last, the, the sixth seal is the seventieth week of Daniel. Which means the tribulation period. Do you understand that, George? I said this. The sixth scene is the seventieth week of Daniel, which is tribulation. The first half of that seventieth week, which is three and a half years, is devoted to the ministry of the two prophets of Revelation. That is when the that's when Israel will receive their own gospel. And the one for the 4,000 who will receive at that time, they will be the elect of Israel. Just as we, the bread of Christ, will be the elect of Christ for the rapture. And we call ourselves, we are called the bride. This one for the four, they are not Gentiles, they are all Jews of Israel. 
and they will receive the gospel. What I'm preaching to you is what the two prophets of Revelation 11 will preach to them. You know, as of this moment, Israel does not believe that the Messiah has come at all. They don't believe. Well, you and I know that what is expected is the second coming. Israel says, no, he hasn't even come the first time. So when rapture strikes, which is Revelation 8, 1, and Revelation 10, 1 to 6, that takes care of rapture. And when rapture strikes, the gospel now goes back to Israel. And that will be the 70th week of Daniel of Revelation 9, verse 27. That is going to be. And that one week, you know, is seven years. The first part of the seven years, three and a half, that is when these two prophets will preach. And that is when this one for the 4,000 Jews will believe what we believe. The first part, three and a half years. It's still a tribulation time. That period, please listen, that period is also when the foolish babies will be killed. This one for the 4,000 will also be killed. They will certainly not be part of the rapture. They're not going anywhere. But they will join us during the millennium reign. They are not going to appear as the white throne judgment. No. They will join us during the millennium reign and they will serve Christ in the temple. Christ is going to build a temple when he returns to this earth to set up his kingdom of heaven on earth. That temple of Christ just go to Ezekiel and read from Ezekiel 40 to Ezekiel 48. Somewhere along in between around 43, you will see the temple that Jesus Christ himself will be. That is the temple where Jesus Christ is going to be to run the affairs of this world for 1,000 years in the millennium. So, in the first part of that seven years, when these 1,044, the foolish judges are going to be killed, when that is done, then the great tribulation will set in when the Antichrist will now start destroying everywhere for another three and a half years, which is the period called the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation is not seven years, it's three and a half years. That is what's called the time of Jacob's trouble. But it's very good today to tell you seven years of Great Tribulation, there's no value for that. In the last three and a half years, of that 17th week of Daniel, that is the Great Tribulation. And then the Great Tribulation will be ended when we come down with Jesus Christ from heaven to destroy the Antichrist forces at the Battle of Armageddon. And after the Battle of Armageddon, Jesus Christ will cleanse the earth and then he will declare the kingdom of heaven set up with himself as the king and with the bride as those who will rule this earth with him. The earth is never going to be destroyed. No, no, don't believe that such thing. It is still the earth. We don't know the names that the places will be called. But they still be there. And Jesus Christ will be the ruler of the entire earth. And we, the bride, will be his ambassadors to the various portions of the earth to rule the earth with Christ for 1,000 years. And at the end of the 1,000 years, then the white throne 
judgment will take place in the air. That is why all Satan and all his fallen angels, the demons today, all of them will be gathered there. All the beings, bodies from K to the last person as a time, as a day that white woman will start, all of them will appear at the one from the second. All the appearing is what is called the second resurrection. And then the white from judgment, and because the white of judgment will take the white from judgment will take place. As I will say to you, I said it is not the place where you come accurately case. You already get. So it is sentencing that you will come for. But God will die some people for salvation at that period. Okay, let me take your question. I'll be close. Yes. Sir, yes. my question is from Revelation 5, verse 6. Revelation 5, verse 6. Revelation 5, verse 6. Yes, sir. What is this? It? And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, mm -hmm. and in the midst of the elders stood a man as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Mm -hmm. My question is from um, the seven spirit of God sent forth into all the earth. Is it the spirit uh, that are upon the prophets of each ages? Yes, the seven horns, the horn is power, you know, and the seven eyes. All of this is dealing with the seven church ages. They are set up the head that then they actually Shadows of the ministry of Christ, the church of Christ, because they are the guardians, they are the ones who carry his message to determine what his church is for each church age. It's talking about the messengers of the seven church ages. Okay, do you have any question? What I just said today, please. Um, Pleading with you, when you get home, fix these chapters I just told you. Please fix these chapters and come back next Sunday to tell me your experience. The entire book will just open to you. Because as, as this book, you are not likely to really understand it unless you. To study very well and the spirit of God goes to you. This thing I don't get to you did not come this did not come overnight. It took weeks before it became very, very clear to me. So it will come today, I will not down, will come. In the end, I was able to put together. And I'm asking you, please do the same, even for my sake, so that I can feel good that what I said. Is correct because a man I can be wrong. So I think it's you put these things like that together and see if you're not going to call up and say, How bad this thing is so simple now? But the way it is put is not be simple. Don't disappoint me. Next Sunday. I'm going to ask you about it. And I hope somebody, at least a brother, I'm going to ask a brother to testify and a sister to testify that they did it and they found it. It has cleared some doubts in their minds. I thank you all for today. If God will tell them, keep us, we will be able to finish this teaching on Rapture next Sunday in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, what we thank you for today. We thank you, O oh God Almighty, for your word that has come. We thank you for your children who have understood. We pray, my Father, my God, be with them throughout this week. Be with them throughout this month. Do not allow that that which you have blessed them with 
Lord and Lord shall be taken away from them by the enemy. The devil and his forces. And all these denominational creeds may they never be strong enough to deceive your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, let them have full understanding and use them to teach others as well in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for today. And we thank you for allowing us to this moment to see this moment. Lord God Almighty, when we go into the new world, when we only a few weeks ago, we're happy that you have brought us to see the month of August. Now it is month of September. The year is running to an end. As the year is running to an end, oh God, we know that time is also running. To the time of your rapture. Father, we want to make the rapture. Help us not to miss the rapture. Any move from the enemy that is going to take us away from the rapture, Father, come and fight for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, use us in particular this time to teach the world because the world has come to the knowledge of your truth. Use us, your children. We surrender to you, O God. Use us and let us have your spirit as we go ahead to direct us in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, God, because we know your answer. Father, bless the work of our hands. The times are hard. The times are hard. The enemy is making it even harder, and especially for your children. Come to the aid of your children, Lord. Father, bless the work of our hands in accordance with your word of promise. Your word has come forth. Father, it can never go back. It must fulfill that which it has promised. Therefore, Lord, do not allow your children to walk in vain. You promise to bless the work of their hands, that they will prosper and be healthy, even like their souls prosper. These two ways, souls prospering and we also prospering in the work of our hands. Father, bring it all to pass so in the mighty name of Jesus. Find the battle of life for us. The enemy is there wanting to destroy, but they shall not destroy us. We are not giving them power over us. Therefore, my Father, my God, God, any move of the enemy that is against us, we know it already. You are the only same God. You fear to speak, us with all speaks. You are the only present God. And you do it all things. You are the only potent God. Fighting battle for us, your children. Wherever the enemy has risen up and is hiding to want to come by surprise and to hit us and to bring evil away, whether the spiritual or temporal, Father, God, raise your standard, raise your power, and destroy all of the flaws that the enemy wants to open against us. Crush them all, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the face of war, where we live, where we play, Anywhere where we go to, the temples are moving, everywhere we stand and sit and lie, any hand of the enemy in any of all of them. Father God, bring them to naught, destroy them, and set us your children free from all of this machination of, machination of Satan and his forces in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, we cry unto you for healing. You are Jehovah and Rafa, we let all our families. Put that many years ago to settle this thing. We believe your healing, Father, come down. Take over all the parts of our bodies. Lord God Almighty, your healing, we took place so many thousands of years ago. Father, and your kingdom will be living. Therefore, heal us. All these organs of us will come up my hands and so will our feet. Every practice of stands for the organs of our bodies. That have brought us so much discomfort in the, in the sickness and disease. Father, crush all of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen to your children and to cry to you. Those who, oh God, are blessed with conception and the uh, uh, conception now, Father, let them deliver and be given to them. No matter what medical science says, Father, your daughters will deliver and they will deliver fine. Amen. The children come out well. Nothing will happen to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are looking for conception, Father, you bless them conception. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you God, for the enemy against your daughters, Father, fight for the daughters of God to be transformed. In Jesus' name, we pray. And those who want to get married, be brothers or sisters, Father God Almighty, bless them, choose for them, so that you don't make any mistakes, God. Now that even before this year runs out, we shall have come to celebrate marriages in this assembly in the mighty name of Jesus. So thank you, Father, because you know you have answered our prayers. But above all, we call help us to be the life of Christ. Amen. Help us to advertise Christ in our lives. Now that people will see us and say, Father, these ones are followers of Christ. Let that be our push of God in Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Father, because you know you have answered our prayers. Let's be that we need it. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Arise, O Lord God, come down and show us thy mercy. For the time to favor Zion, I will pray to you, Lord, that it may be time to favor us. For here the same time is come, and you have said it so. Let it be a portion, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Receive the Christian blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. Let his face shine upon you and the Christian of you. Amen. Let his countenance upon you. The Lord bless his children and his angel peace. The grace. The love of God. 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty living master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen. And thank you, brother. Sister Ray, can get in touch with me today or this week. Make sure you call me. Yes, and I thank you, our sister Popsy, and thank you, our sister Yibo, and thank you, our sister Okechi, our brother Zika, our brother Ajima, our brother Odi, and sister Riska, and sister Fatima, our brother Rima.
for him as well. I pray for God to protect him, give him more grace. Do his work. God make him more younger. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Father, we thank you. him financially. You bless him as well spiritually in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Much of God out of him, oh Lord, Father, we pray, replenish him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give him the power of iron in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I keep on preaching your word. Father, deliver him from the hands of enemy. Deliver him from the hands of enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I go going old. Father, every element, every organ is body that is going old. Father, make it them more younger for him to have more strength to do your work, to live more and more. We will celebrate more birthday in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is not the last you will celebrate in the mighty name of Jesus. For now, he shall see more, more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. For now, we depend on you. You are the only one that we depend on. We have no other God as we ask. Do it for us in the mighty name of Jesus. For now, we pray for our offering. Every hand that go into this offering, for that, bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. I am that I am. We have given unto you every blessing that attached to this Father. Bless us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. People that don't have to give to David, provide for them. You are the great provider. Provide for them so that the next time they will give unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I shall not want to rest in the island of In this meeting, I still want to rest in the island of